Hello, thanks for listening to this episode of the Go Beyond Disruption podcast, where we share insights from inside the accounting and finance profession that help you stay ahead of the curve, whatever sector you work in. I'm Kyle Hannan. I'm based in the AICPA and SEMA office in the heart of London's financial district. This week, we're talking about RPA, Robotic Process Automation, and we're talking to Niti Meta Shukla. She is the co-founder and Senior Vice President of Brand Strategy and the Culture Architect for California-based company Automation Anywhere. And they are quite something. They're a developer of robotic process or RPA automation software. The company's product, which is called Automation Anywhere Enterprise, caters to enterprises looking to deploy a digital workforce. And that's a workforce composed of software bots that complete business processes end to end. That's why this episode is entitled RPA Beyond the Bot. And uh, Niti Meta is the perfect expert guest to give us the inside track on the state of RPA today. So uh, she'll talk us through how a digital workforce platform helps people to improve the quality of lives by bringing automation into their working lives rather than by replacing them. So you'll get some new understandings of RPA. We'll uh, talk about how process automation can run across all business areas of a business. We'll talk through the future of work and discuss what that means when we talk about a digital workforce. And that digital workforce doesn't necessarily mean what you think it does. So let's hear from our expert guest now. Hi, Niti. Where are you joining us from today? Hi, Kyle. From San Jose, California, our headquarters. You have offices in many different parts of the world. So tell us something about your company, Automation Anywhere, and the work it does. We are Automation Anywhere, and as you mentioned, we are the global leader in robotic process automation. Simply put, we build a software platform that allows users to create bots that then you could use to automate any business or IT process with simple, easy to use technology. Uh, we work with any application in any environment and these RPA bots basically are integrated with intelligence and AI and machine learning and analytics in order to let automation be democratized and used across the globe in all verticals, in all industries and for all processes. So big job, but big future. So how would a typical finance or accounting professional work with these technologies that you're focusing on? In accounting and finance, we have a lot of data, of course, and we have a lot of applications we use in order to use that data to get good insights, to report accounting processes and accounting um, uh, numbers. And a lot of these processes, just inherently in the way we've set up these systems, have a lot of repetitive tasks in it. There are some processes where there are certain aspects of the process that are repetitive or mundane, as we like to call it. And there are some processes that which are end-to-end -end, um, extremely repetitive. They don't increase the knowledge work of the user um, and what the user brings to the table as an accountant or a finance executive. And what RPA allows you to do is basically automate that process very simply in the fashion that that user wants to. So let's say, for example, in accounting, you could automate procure to pay or order to cash, or a new customer account set up, or a payment validation or reconciliation, or a three-way matching between three systems. Um, you could you know, uh, automate any reporting that you need for accounting and finance, create audit trails, or increase compliance and uh, you know, formulate uh, reports for compliance and requirements that governments might have. So any process, really, that an accounting and finance executive may look at and say, this is repetitive in nature, any part of it or an end-to-end -end process, we can automate using robotic process automation. And this is something that a lot of people are paying attention to right now, but you've been paying attention to the industry for, for quite a while. So what was the last big disruption that you saw in the industry? Let's go back a few years. My opinion might be a little bit biased, but I do believe that robotic process automation is the biggest disruption we have seen. And I'll tell you why I believe so. Automation is not something that's new. For the last maybe 50 years, uh, ever since we've had computers and computer technology at the workplace, we have seen certain aspects of automation being encouraged or being part of how a company operates. 
What has actually changed is that this automation now has been democratized. So automation, traditionally, you would have a process that, say, XYZ company wanted to kind of automate. They would need to hire a couple of engineers, map the process, have those engineers develop or code through that automation, and then actually uh, use the automation to make that process automated. Now, typically, that would take about a year to two years. And by the time the process was actually automated, the process would have changed, either because of compliance, because the business has evolved, because the way you treat your customers has changed. Some aspect of it has always changed. And so automation became this kind of mammoth task that became economically unviable for most companies or for most processes, at least. And what changed with robotic process automation is it bought, brought that level of usability and democratization, that speed with which you could automate, because it's a very user-friendly platform. It's based on wizard-based approach, drag-and-drop-based approach. It's really brought automation to the level that any business or IT user, doesn't matter who you are in the company and what your position is, you could train yourself and learn very quickly, really, to make bots to automate, as I mentioned, parts or a whole process end-to-end. That is the true disruption, because now we've enabled literally every human who's working to have the ability to automate any or part of his process. And that will change what he brings to the table for his company and allow him and his company to thrive even more than before. And it's a fascinating angle because where it comes to business, accounts and and, and finance functions have always underpinned the processes that make business successful or in which sometimes, of course, highlight opportunities for growth or problems in the development of of a business model. And that goes way back. So if you bring us up to date, and if you look at what's happening now with RPA, who does this robotic process automation affect the most? And what would you say it means in practice for the typical finance or accounting professional? As I mentioned, uh, robotic process automation will change every role, really, um, and make it more productive and efficient. But it's especially useful to finance and accounting professionals because, as you know, in finance and accounting, first of all, there are a lot of processes and a lot of compliance requirements, a lot of data to go through, really, and a lot of different systems that have to be used for that data and that reporting. Um, Transferring data between systems, transferring processes between systems, um, using that same data to report for government and compliance, internal accounting, as well as uh, for your employees and your shareholders and everything else. So the fact that you can automate a lot of it means that you can, one, reduce the cost, of course, of using these processes in your day-to-day. Two, you can make them error-free because humans are prone to certain levels of error, especially while doing the repetitive work. And bots don't. They don't get tired. They can work 24 by 7. And that means you can rely on that data to be error-free. And three is the speed with which you can deliver this. You can deliver these processes at speeds that have never been heard before. Let me give you an example In the U.S., for example, we have um, mortgages. When you apply for a mortgage, you traditionally would wait about three to four weeks for that mortgage to be approved after it goes through all the rigorous checks and balances, you know, uh, uh, the verifications, the three-way matchings, the account opening, and then the mortgage would be issued. This has now become a 24-hour turnaround you have 24-hour mortgages in the mainstream. And this is because the automation has become that commercially viable, really. And similarly, we see this across the world in so many accounting processes and financial processes for companies where we are changing what can be made possible with these three things, with the cost reduction, with the speed with which we can deliver it, and the error reduction. This means that the end result for every customer in every industry changes. It means there's a happier customer at the other end who's not waiting three weeks after choosing a home in order for the mortgage to close. Um, It means so many different things uh, for any industry and any vertical and how you want to approach your customer and customer service as a company. And with this being something that will become a global reality uh, more and more, You've got some very interesting examples 
in those other countries you were talking about of how RPA has been transformative uh, for certain industries, for certain businesses. And you've given us a couple of examples, which we'll put links to in the show notes. Uh, Tell us about the examples from Australia and then from Colombia in South America. Absolutely. Um, Automation Anywhere itself has over 3,000 customer brands in about 40 to 50 countries that we currently support and who use our product, who use our technology platform. And we see it across every vertical, as I mentioned, you know, from banking and finance to insurance to um, government to medical to healthcare. And so the couple of examples you were talking about, one was Bank Colombia, which is one of the largest banks in the Southern Hemisphere. And we uh, used them to, I mean, they used us rather, Automation Anywhere, to automate some of their processes. And they saw in a very, very short amount of time, 1,300% return on investment. But even more important than that, they increased their customer satisfaction numbers. They had $7 million in new revenue streams. And to a business like Bank Columbia and other banks, that is a game changer. It means there's a competitive edge. It means that you are serving your customers better, which in the long run, long run is really what the bank is all about. And this is what RPA has done. Even though we are automating back-end processes and front-end processes and really the mundane and repetitive, the end result is anything but repetitive and mundane. The end result is really about the customer. And that's what's so great about it. With Australia Post as well, we did the same. We've automated a lot of their financial and accounting systems, and they use many bots for it. And with with organizations like Australia Post, who have such a large requirement, really, um, it means that they are serving everybody better, serving the entire society better, really. And that's what's great about RP. And that's what gets me excited about the technology. So, Niti, take us back to the beginning. How did Automation Anywhere actually start? What was the the spark that led to this global company that we're talking about? Automation Anywhere started in 2003. Mihir Shukla, our CEO, was the vision and the driving force behind what this technology or what he felt there was a lack in the market uh, uh, from a technology perspective and he wanted to bring to the market. He had worked with very many enterprise level uh, software technologies, including supply chain and things like that. And there was this inherent um, lack or a problem really uh, from the, as I mentioned, the democratization of it. And so we came at it from how do we increase productivity and efficiency for businesses everywhere across all these systems that we've created, all this technology that we've created as a world really. Um, And that's kind of where it seeded from. And we started creating software that would be hopefully very, very powerful in what it could deliver, but at the same time, that easy to use, that anybody could pick it up, anybody could skill themselves really to use it and become better at what they were giving the market. And that's where it started in 2003, um, and we haven't stopped since. And the technology has evolved and progressed, and we've introduced now AI, machine learning, we've had intelligence built into the bots, And so we are coming at it from an angle of how will this unleash a next level of products and services for the world as a whole? And what can we do in order to aid people so that they can kind of come at it from that creative, that innovation, uh, that innovative angle, really, and see what they can deliver to the world now that everything everything that can be automated is automated. Very interesting. And much more to come as we continue our conversation shortly. We'll find out more about digital workforces, RPA and the idea of everyday automation. All of that is coming up in this episode of the Go Beyond Disruption podcast. It's brought to you by the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. You can find out more about the podcast and about the rest of our project at gobeyonddisruption.com. 
If you're a new listener and you've just discovered the podcast, welcome. You can subscribe via your podcast app, get every new episode absolutely free. You can also have a browse through our older episodes. You'll find out a lot more about this topic, RPA, AI, and plenty of other stuff. We've got close to a hundred conversations which focus on how technology is changing the profession. Also, looking at how we as professionals are rising to the challenges, identifying opportunities, and using our human intelligence to stay ahead of the curve. We are talking to Niti Shukla, the co founder and senior vice president of brand strategy and also the culture architect of automation anywhere. We're talking about RPA, everyday automation, and the real impact of a digital workforce. So, Niti, how is this RPA technology being enhanced right now? What are the trends that are coming up moving forward? RPA, like other technologies, now requires a certain level of intelligence, a certain level of artificial intelligence and machine learning that is inbuilt into the bots. And the reason is it that's what makes it user friendly. So the fact that you have bots that can understand the intent or are able to be trained where if you train them on four invoices, let's say, it understands that the intent behind how you've trained it on these four invoices can be applied to another 20. And then it self-trains on those other 20 and then is able to use that training, that intelligence in order to deliver more easier, uh, repetitive and mundane transactions that have been automated really. Um, that's what the customer base really asks for. You don't want a bot that would just do what it's been trained to do. You want it to understand what that training was intended to do and kind of take into account that while it delivers some of the repetitive work that you would otherwise do as a human. So we use, for example, Google. We expect when we, when we put in a search term in Google for it to understand the intent behind that search term. And the better the result of that intent, the better the usage of that platform. Similarly for a bot, the fact that if I let the bot know this is what my intent is when I train it on four invoices, and it's able to populate and understand and use that intelligence to train itself on another 20 is a game changer. And that's kind of where this technology is going. It's making it even more user-friendly, even more powerful, and even more correct, really, when it delivers some of that repetitive process. You're talking about bots, and of course, bots aren't the only example of how RPA technology can be deployed. That may be an external customer-facing iteration of the technology. There may be internal bots or form fillings, um, things being used in all sorts of different ways. And uh, all of that is changing, as you've said. So how do we, as as the professionals, as business people, as organisations, keep up with something that is changing this fast? Change is constant, as we all know, and I believe that the, the, the space where we are at right now, the, the place in time where we are at right now as a society, technology is just changing super fast. And so the way to keep up with that change, in my opinion, is continuous learning. The, again, bringing it back to RPA, RPA is one of those technologies that you can learn really fast because it has been democratized in its usability. So you could get trained in two weeks even um, and three months to even master certification, for example. So that that bite sized learning, the easy and continuous uh, learning that you can enable yourselves with is how you cope with this change, how you keep up with this technology change and what you will bring to the workplace and how your companies and your organizations will deliver services and products. Okay, so I'm sure there's more than one person listening to this and asking themselves this question, how does this impact me personally, perhaps at home, perhaps at the office, or perhaps at this stage in in my career? So for someone asking that question, what would you say that they need to do next in terms of continued upskilling or continuous professional development? What do they need to turn into an opportunity? Look at our workplaces today. We use computers mainstream. The PC changed the way businesses operate, doesn't matter which vertical, which industry, where in the world. 
And RPA is something very similar to that is what we think. We think every human will be enabled by the bots that he creates so that he's not doing the repetitive and mundane and he's doing more creative work, more innovative work, more knowledge-based work, more experience-related work. And that's kind of where human contribution to workplace is going, even more creation, even more innovation. So you need to enhance your skill set. The fact that you learn to use a PC really um, is something that is a given today. You need to know how to learn a P- how to work a PC if you're going to come into work really. And it's a similar concept. We believe in the next five to ten years, bots would be that mainstream where every human has the ability to create bots that will support him best in what he delivers to to his company, to his society, and to you know the world at large. And let's keep a focus on that world at large, which I know you've often talked about. If we think about the power of these technologies to have that impact on a wider scale, uh, looking at the global business context, um, I know you've often talked about the potential of these technologies to transform so much of our society in, in a positive way. It's not just in the business context, is it? You can actually see some cultural shifts happening. And I know you've talked about in the past how this can help, for example, challenge institutional bias, which for some people might think, well, they might say, well, that's a bit unexpected. But, you know, if we move beyond the bot, if we move beyond just the purely business context, what other unexpected directions could you see RPA and these technologies, uh, these technologies Uh, making change happen? Let's consider a historical industrial revolution where we had electricity being generated. The fact that electricity was invented was a game changer, not because we suddenly had light and day was now well into the night. It's because of the multitudes of products, services, industries that came up because they could use electricity to better what they bring to the market. I mean, just imagine a world today, which industry is not touched by electricity, really? And so we believe we are a part, RPA is a part of the fourth industrial revolution, where these technologies will become so mainstream and so democratized that every human can then take it to the next level. And the reason why that's important is is because hopefully the way it will be taken and used by every let's say, government might be a little bit different, but it will bring their society to the next level. For example, Japan may use it to deal with the fact that they have an aging population. India may use it in order to reskill the society or the outsourcing world as they have created into an automation skill set where the shared service organizations are now offering an even better service to their customers and so forth. Now, US and the UK, for example, we might have a lot more innovation and creativity that comes out of companies because they have a lot more humans looking at the creative aspects of what they bring to the workplace and are thinking outside the box, really human traits that no bot can really create except humans. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is the taking away the biases of a society and how artificial intelligence can help with it. The fact that a bot is able to look at this data and look at it from really a unbiased viewpoint uh, or look at the data and produce results that have a little less bias than a human might have will allow us to rethink and recalibrate certain, certain biases that we have. Yes, the humans train the bots, so the bots might have a certain level of bias, but the fact that the bot is a third party, uh, an unbiased party, looking at that data or presenting that data allows us to look at it with fresh eyes, allows us to look at those inherent biases as a society that we might have and allow us a certain level of leapfrogging in order to take away those biases. So in my opinion, these technologies will change the way businesses look at things and it will change the way society operates, whether it's a government or a large organization or certain populations in certain parts of the world, because it allows us to be better humans. 
I think that's a great vision to keep our eyes on. And let's actually keep our eyes on the future, thinking about our typical listener. They they often like to keep their eyes um, ahead of where they are right now. And to stay ahead of, of where the, the transformation curve is at the moment, uh, from your experience, what if you look down the line, what's the next disruption you see coming? If you had to say, right, from the RPA perspective, here's what's next. What's that going to be? I would say it's up for grabs, really. It's, it's as far as your imagination will take you. The fact that I don't have to do some of the repetitive and mundane works means that I can sit in and think outside the box, think creatively, um, just not for automation anywhere, but for any company using RPA, really. And so I'm excited to see where it goes. We're just at the beginning of this transformation, and we'll see how it translates to different industries and different verticals. We already see so much changing, as I mentioned, the mortgage use case, or nurses spending more time with their you know, uh, patients versus filling in forms. These are things that as a society will leave us in a better place, in a, in a much, much happier place, in my opinion. And so I'm excited to see where it will go. I like the thought of that. Less paperwork, more people work. As you say, um, it's all about human capability. Let's see where our imaginations, once freed up, will will take us. Um, well, I tell you where it has taken us, uh, to the end of the podcast. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left. So before we wrap up, let's do some signposting. And for anyone who'd like to find out more about this topic in general, about your work in particular, where would you recommend they go online? What are some resources you'd, you'd suggest? So apart from obviously our site, which is automationanywhere.com, you can go to Automation Anywhere University where we provide free training and we also have a robotic process automation for accounts payable and receivable um, at the AICPA course. Um, and then we also have a people, uh, you can get to it from our URL, but that's a forum and a society basically that we've created of RPA users. And we also have the bot store where you can create, uh, where you can download ready to make bots and ready to use bots into any accounting or financial processes. And we have over 500 bots there. So you get, gives you a good idea of the processes that you can kind of automate. And you have a ready bot that you can take, edit and get started literally in minutes. So I would encourage you to use all those um you know, resources in order to look up a little bit more on RPA and how it can change your world. And in addition, I was just doing a bit of uh, trawling through the website just in the last day or two, and I see you've launched a community um, resource as well, haven't you? That's right. And that's a people. And the idea was to bring humans all around the world who use RPA in different forms together so they can solve for bigger problems and they can be more innovative and get, you know, um, excited by what others are doing and see how they can bring it into their organizations. And it creates a great support structure because we do believe that all businesses around the world can benefit from it. Right. Thanks for tying that together because I hadn't put the two together. But fortunately, we have someone on the podcast who does just that. So, Niti, what's one actionable suggestion that you'd like to leave for accounting and finance professionals that help them go beyond disruption? I will try to summarize it. But very quickly, technology is about human enablement. And you need to chase your own competitive edge by continuous learning so that you can bring that next level of innovation to your organizations, your societies, and your world. Chase your own competitive edge. Get comfortable with learning more. I think that's a great place to wrap up this discussion. Uh, Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, There is plenty more to explore about the topic. The show notes have links to all of the resources we've mentioned. Uh, If you'd like to view the show notes, just click on the episode's info icon, uh, which you'll see either in your podcast app on your smartphone or tablet. You can also open this podcast episode in your computer's web browser. So if you go online, you can be on Apple Podcasts or Google. Just type in 
Go Beyond Disruption podcast. Uh, look for our episodes. You'll see them all there. Just open the episode in your browser and you'll see all the show notes complete with the links. You'll find everything right there. Uh, two other websites we'd recommend for listeners interested in uh, taking this further. You can look at AICPAstore.com slash Go Beyond Disruption or CGMAstore.com slash Go Beyond Disruption. Courses, webinars, plenty of professional development resources helping you stay ahead of the curve. Thanks again to our guest from Automation Anywhere, that is Niti Shukla. And of course, thank you for listening to this podcast. If you've enjoyed it, go tell someone about it, share it with your network and tell us what you think. You can email us using the feedback link in our show notes. From our London office, I'm Kyle Hannon, and we'll be back soon with more conversations that help you and your profession to go beyond disruption. Till next time, goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beyond Disruption, brought to you by the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. Learn more about today's topic at AICPA-CIMA.com forward slash disruption. This podcast is designed to provide illustrative information with respect to the subject matter covered and does not represent an official opinion or position of the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants or any of its subsidiaries or affiliates. It is provided with the understanding that the association, its affiliates, and subsidiaries are not engaged in rendering legal, accounting, or other professional services. If such advice or expert assistance is required, the services of a competent professional person should be sought. The association, its subsidiaries and affiliates make no representations, warranties, or guarantees as to and assume no responsibility for the content or application of the material contained herein and expressly disclaim all liability for such damages arising out of the use of, reference to, or reliance on such material.